cares about that much. Yeah, I'm also wondering uh, the magic practice that Goblin has been able to get because he's been such a heavy traveler lately. I've been literally seeing him boom before my eyes where I've known Goblin since Smash 4, since he's been competing when he was really young. And just being able to see all this growth is always so enjoyable. Both these players from CFL, despite Goblin coming and coming around everywhere around the world. But look how quickly he is to make a statement Whoa. from the beginning. The quick attack contention. I'm surprised even went no forward oh. by the ledge. But look at this already at 93 percent we've only been down 20 seconds why well, play neutral but i'm just gonna frame check you like like he, he has ray has such good frame data that just beats people out and he is just he has basically said esam don't you dare press buttons on me because he is getting so much damage out of it and he already saw that up b he's not afraid to use it that back air of just barely missing the KO. Yeah, 128 right now you hear the crowd going in the quick attack he knew the spot does into the immediate up b too this is just a really solid gameplay from the start. Do it again! Do it again! Why not? You haven't respected a single time. You hear the CFL crowd's uh, chats going up. You can see it in his camera. They are up and they are going. I love this. This is my favorite part right here. You see Esam already used to this. We're talking about Esam's used to having the crowd try to cheer up against him. But you know what? That's the power of maybe that he may need. But Goblin is just running it down here. Finally, Esam gets a conversion started. Hopefully, he can try to keep that momentum because he definitely needs it. He's at 38% on his second stock. Oh, my goodness. It's crazy how quickly Pikachu silences something. They got hit by the backer and everybody's been, uh oh. Like, it's been so <laughs> silent so fast. But for, for Esam, the scary part is about, a, like, one more straight hit, he's at kill percent. Like, he actually has to watch out for double edge hits, but the Thunder Joe catching the landing to confirm it to that dash attack, only taking 44%, with no rage, actually significantly better here. Unless he gets roll red by an F-Smash. Yeah, especially by the ledge right here, too. We saw what happened before. The Joel, I like how he's been using that as a defensive option to guarantee that he could move in without Goblin swinging that sword. Yeah, and that's the thing you need to do against a rushdown-based character like Roy. You need to make them slow down as much as possible, looking for the air dodge. He gets it, but he was out of range because of the high recovery route that Goblin decided to take. Now you have to watch out for Jab Bear at ledge as he aggressively approaches from quick attack without of any fear at all. You see the respect now that Esam has. He went in, started the setup by holding forward, and now he's trying to hold back a little bit. But, but finding actually some good trades here. Goblin having to try to recover that T Jolt, though, is going to be able to clip him right below the ledge. Exactly. I know Panda Global's brand may be hold forward, but in this matchup, you need to hold back. You need to chill a little bit sometimes as we see him get this lead, though, because of that strong defensive play, like you just said. Just chuckling right now, just hearing everyone go crazy. It sounds they like you're literally in. right next to me for some reason. The back air now coming in from Esam actually did the falling back air, but Goblin really smart to go in for that high recovery, wanting to stay center stage. Exactly. Trying to find a good whip punish there is Goblin too, looking for Esam to run up with maybe dash attack, dash grab or something. Trying to find that sweet spot up till Goblin behind the stock, but he's at the range where he knows that ECM is not going to respect him up close because he doesn't want to get hit by jab bears or potentially an tilt, which is trying to find these short uh, bears. I am not going to repeat what I hear them <laughs> saying right now. I, I just, I just chuckled, just chuckled oh to myself. God. Like, all right, it is what it is, and now Goblin <laughs> is going to try to take this. He had the lead at first, but you see how quickly Esam was able to turn the whole thing around. He's at seventy percent in that last stock. I'm hearing Purple Guy just go absolutely wild in the crowd still. Is I don't even comprehend the words, by you. I, I comprehend them. I'm just not. <laughs> I, I, oh my God, they're actually killing me over here. You gotta get back though. Get stage position. Now you're forced to recover cover at a 45 degree angle you got to take on that thunder but he gets to down air finds it no you don't i am a whole liar anti-air up smash is gonna take out that first game and esam gets the first w about jumping around esam shield the way that he was able to come back from that really strong start that goblin opened up with don't know if that was the crowd energy right here but it was like as if the counter chance had to come out to help support esam yeah you see esam just, just like yeah it's business as usual just like yeah i'm, 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 gonna, I'm gonna make a video about this, this later <laughs> <laughs> I am a content creator. Now, uh, for Goblin, is this is this is one of the things that he has to get through to hit that next level. Goblin is right there. He is right at the edge of breaking through to become one of those threats you look at consistently and go, he's going to get top eight every time. Not sometimes, every time. Esam is a problem in that regard. This matchup sucks for Roy. There's no other way to talk about it. This is like a 7-3 matchup in, so in their uh, their mind. We saw what happened with that second stock, how quickly he was to take that just because he had fallen below that ledge mm -hmm. and the T-Jolt was enough to oh! rip it. But okay, talk about matchups now. We got a change up here with Goblin going ice. Okay, so this one hits me uh, on this regard. So this matchup 
is, in a nutshell, is odd because Pikachu can just abuse the recovery from Ike. And it's, he doesn't have great out of shield options. But one thing Ike does have is massive hitboxes that check the approach from Pikachu. So if Goblin plays it correctly, he can definitely snipe a W here. We've seen Yes do it in the past, but you have to make sure you don't jump too much because that's how Pikachu wins. He constantly checks that ball hop. Yeah, and yeah, constantly with the uppy here too, he's able to actually contest Isam, but the moment you do that here, when Isam's going to be able to run away, he's going to still t you before moving in the oh. forward smash. He read that here just slightly off spacing. I want to know what dealer he bought his car from because those brakes were on point. Unfortunately, yeah, the drift, not enough right there. We need to go ahead and move back just a little bit on the calibration there, but down tilt, forward air, looking for a drop down there. He gets it, gets the follow up there. Tried to read him on his way down. That's an up air, and that's a stock. That was incredibly well played by Goblin. That's why we see the change up here. Although it's super difficult to make a recovery around Pikachu here, you're super linear when it comes to, especially your horizontal recovery, but as long as you are able to get that conversion, you're gonna be able to do so much damage, and this is Pikachu that we're talking. So he's gonna be able to annihilate that that stock so quickly. Exactly. We're talking, and speaking of just taking out stocks quickly, Pikachu does not get to do that outside of early gimps because Ike is heavy. It's not going to be easy to get the KOs, especially oh. now you're on Town of City 2. I just realized this is a Roy player and intentionally left Town of City open, but regardless, it's going to work well for Ike here too. That's why he wanted to go here with the Ike. Trying to go for the down tilt here, but the back air mix ups from Esam crossing up the shield. The up again, stopping Esam from going in for another jump follow up. What a way to stop the Thunder Jaw approaches, too. He's forcing Esam to back off, and now he's using this uh, just the spacing. But that's his double jump. He caught him with the bear. The Nair got him out. If he got caught by that bear, that would have been really bad. What? Always. No fly zone. You are not allowed to. <laughs> this is my bubble. This is mine. Get away from me. He's refusing to let Esam approach, but Esam finally finds that parry, which you need to do in this matchup to prevent someone from swinging for free. And it's why he was holding shield there, too, just in case Goblin wanted to go for a mix up, wanted to go for an aggressive side being on top of the stage, but with another up Yeah, you see that Esam was ready right there, contesting him, but he manages to land on top of the platform. What a way to come back. I. You know, it, it, you know, if, if Goblin ever becomes a professional racer, I'm, I'm betting on him. His ability to actually <laughs> stop right when he needs to has been so good. But this is near up. It's a very small window where near up air still connects. That did get nerfed at, in the uh, previous patches, but Ether at ledge can also be a problem here for Esam. That's why he's being very careful about how he approaches. Out of range for it, but he gets the act tilt. That could lead to something good. You also have that new buff with the frame four kill option at ledge yes, that yeah. Jab can find the stock. Very good point to that actually here. You have to worry about that in the back air. And again, he's at 142. He has rage that he's working off of. And again, this is Pikachu sneezing on Pikachu. You're gone out here. And Esam, how are you going to play this at a disadvantage? But at 150, he needs to do that with the back air. Now he's going to be able to send him off, but he's a heavy boy. Exactly. I, like, I'm not trying to show no bias because I happen to be an Ike main, but I am loving the way that he's approaching <laughs> this matchup right now. That, what great job ju uh, just, just avoiding the spacing to avoid that. Going for a couple ethers just to try and get Esam to press a button. Going for it that time though because he assumed that he wouldn't actually uh, like move forward to smack him that cost him now last stock here for goblin on winner's side potentially here vicky he may need to slow down the uppies though every single time the last four times he's been doing it he's been punished each time but i like the mix-ups that we see from the side he talked about town and that's exactly why he gave this a shot here and you can see the success he's been able to find it but can you get out of these lightning loops you see the uppie you saw me immediately air dodge right out of that situation does oh, not want any business being so high up there goblin's got to chill a little bit he tried to do a falling up or out of disadvantage we saw the startup and nothing happened. Now he's going for a lot of ethers. He's trying to find that, that momentum back. Esam will capitalize on it. Now for Esam, you have to do exactly what you're doing. Thunder Jolt. Make sure you force Ike to jump so you can catch him with that forward air. Force him to the ledge so you can beat him where he's at his weakest because that is going to be the key factor you do not want to be dealing with Ike at a disadvantage right now. And you see Esam 2 playing this so confidently, just waiting for the opportunity to jab here by the ledge. They immediately roll back to see what exactly he was going to do. But this is the patient play where he's just waiting for Goblin to just make a move on his shields. And you can see right here the amount of damage that he just puts on with that one conversion. The crowd still being able to try to show their support for Goblin. The crowd is loud. They are into it right now. Every hit that Goblin lands sets them off. Right now, it's not looking to... Oh, wait. Finds an oh. air. Tries to go. Do not do that at that spot. That is frame 12. You do not have anything to beat Pikachu in that button. So, 123. Coming in with an air. Finds it. Finds the fair. You got to watch out for your jump. He tried to find the back air. That would have taken it, Vicky. Yeah, right there, too. You see the side B, and he goes for the ledge. He just want to land right on top of Esam. Had the opportunity, seeing that Esam was not right there to help Edge Garden. Bring this to game three. This is too good. I, I need to see another game. But this is a bad spot. That is your jump still, though. He somehow Ooh. dodges the forward smash. Esam has him in an awkward Ooh, position. No oh, way. He, he, he has the ledge cancel. Yes, he has the ledge cancel. 
He had to, oh my goodness, he what had the time. That back air is it could, could connect. Esam, all he needs is one parry up smash. All he needs is one good read on the landing, and that's it. Dash attack possibly can take it out at this point too. It's fresh, but one jump will take you out. If you're Esam, back air gives him the stage. I'm sitting on the edge of AC. Another one again. Takes advantage of the platforms, but he gets another grab. He but he mashes out. out. He mashes so quick. Down at a disadvantage. Gets him out. Another one else. Uh, uh, up throw. If he connects this time, Vicky, though, that's it. Oh my god, everyone's screaming right now. This is so intense. The Tijo with the backer by the ledge. Good this is a heavy point. This is a great DI and your Ike at the same time. Oh, the oh, Eno no will take it! No and that's gonna no bring us to a game it. three! <laughs> we are going on to a game three! You ask and you shall receive! Yes! Yes! Let's go! This has been such a good set! The, I, the, Goblin has been constantly saying, I'm not an Ike man. I'm not trying to play Ike all the time. My Roy is it. But the CFL chance going off, this is what is this is what needs to happen. It's, now for Esam, what do you do to what, regain your composure after what's that? What's so funny is that they're technically both CFL. But, you know, CFL playing <laughs> Goblin from the very start. Esam coming from the SFL to move out to CFL within the last year. I just love this energy, though. I, I, I am here for it. And the main thing is, too, when you look at the person on the rise, which is the person who has been there, this is somebody who has won tournaments in the past, he is hailed as the best Pikachu for a reason. Dealing with this matchup with the character that is a pocket pick is hype, and it'll get people going. But Esam is consistent. He is very good at the game, and he is, understands how to not let that happen again. Maybe, because the way that went was pretty stressful mm -hmm. at the end. We're gonna get game three. We got a lot of hype going on in the crowd. We're running it here. We went to Smashville. Yeah, I was gonna ask you. Which, yeah, I was gonna ask you what was. I was expecting uh, Touted City to have, honestly did play a huge part into this, but you know now going out to Smashville, you have less room to work with. But at least you still have that middle platform. So the main thing for Pikachu here is this is the shortest distance that you have. The shortest distance you have to work to get a ledge trap against Ike. That's where he's at his weakest. So you can force him to ledge. Problem is though, that center platform belongs entirely to Ike and his friends, and he loves <laughs> to fight for him, and he will swing there. <laughs> though, do not hide under that too much or try to land on it too much because he'll get it. I have no idea how I, the armor is coming through. The mix up with the side B has just been the most entertaining thing between the platform oh. candles and now going through it you see Ethan the up B again. Now nah, he was actually in an awkward position so that's it. He somehow gets away from that. That would have been huge for Esam. Down tilt. He gets him to jump though. So now he's got to find a safe recovery. He does go to ledge. That was that was the right idea. Yeah that's still intel too. That's Goblin just waiting to see what Esam wanted to do in that situation. But the fair catching him up in the air. Great DI. He's going to be able to try to mix up the side beat here. Goes right past Esam but the backer out of shield comes out to try to contest. Goblin is super brave. He keeps landing directly in front of Esam and a lot of these spots where most of the time people would get punished and he just avoids getting punished. Back throw, get him position though. You go for ledge. You try to keep that thunder jump. No, he actually did it. He just decided to try to get it. But that jab does beat out the startup of Ether, and that is going to be something Esam is now going to be thinking about. If that, and that's what I would have said, but he doesn't get the, the, the grounded hitbox he's looking for to get the KO. So it's heads right here, 169%. Neither of these players have lost the stock, but you see the roll back. Esam waiting, just running right past him, gets that grab, gets that first stock done. And now he doesn't have to worry about the rage like he had to in the last game. Now what's very scary, oh my goodness, falls out of it. What's very scary about the win condition for Pikachu is the fact that Pikachu wants to find that up throw as a KO, but you then give Ike a lot of rage. So it's hard to consistently find that up throw as a KO option as time goes, because Goblin hasn't fallen for a single one of these edge guards somehow, which has been insane. And there's an ether, that's the ground and hitbox, but he's not dead yet. Esam moving up in the seat. So distracting hearing ABC one, two, three chance. I don't even know. Oh, uh, everybody having to remember what their ABCs are here. See Goblin now trying to jump right behind him. Just like Goblin right now is just trying to remember how to get right back into this because you see Esam, this is scary Esam. This is momentum with a lead here, Esam. And now he's just waiting. He's waiting for him to come down with that ether, like you were saying before, and getting punched in the same exact way. He trades, Ooh. but no one he wants here, especially when you're down an entire stock against Esam. And now, not anymore, but now still an entire stock He's gonna have to burn through. Absolutely easy as one, two, three is that forward smash on the apex of the ether, especially if you did not space it. So Esam definitely feel good about that. But the forward air taking it out. This is th this is a situation where Esam has to watch out for his ledge recoveries because if I'm Goblin, I'm gonna try and rip a two frame maybe on one of those down airs to try and catch him on a quick attack so he can get a spike. That's one of his best weak conditions he has to get himself back in the game. You see this, it's finally coming together here for Goblin, at least trying to get the up beat, but now rolling back in, the forward smash, another up beat coming in, 39%. He has to work with this at 80% on his last stock, 
completely different than what we were been able to see, but I think a lot of that damage from Esam has come strictly because he's been able to ledge guard Goblin. Exactly, and Esam, oh, actually whipping the grab. So Goblin can possibly snipe on something pretty soon. Esam is going for the Thunder Jolt camping. There's no reason to try and pu uh, push too hard here because that will end up giving you a bad spot. Finds a downer though on a spot that was actually really good. He has not been... I know. Every single quick draw just goes unpunished, which is crazy. Except that for the very end. I start it immediately. <laughs> Caster curse at the very end. If you can't get it at the end, you gotta get it at the start of, right? <laughs> He's lingering right there. He's a sitting duck, and Esam loves to go off stage. What a great set, though. Even though that game three wasn't as close as what we had seen game number two, that was still so fantastic to see it go to a game three nonetheless. Absolutely. Ike Nation, that one was my fault. I'm sorry. Ooh. But that's really the, the pocket pick bringing out the Ike was actually incredibly smart in a matchup where that's kind of, it's kind of scary because Pikachu's so evasive. He's so easy at making sure that you try to swing a little bit too much out of shield. Normally, they, they're going to be looking for